Well, good morning, everyone. You know, there's an old Chinese saying. Here is, uh, and I'm sure most of you have heard it before. I'd like us to say it together this morning. Uh, let's say it on the count of three. Everyone together. One, two, three. Okay, I guess, I guess we need to work on our, our Chinese. A uh, translation is, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Have you heard that one before? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And it's true that every journey that you take begins with that first step, that one step. And we're going to be starting a new series this morning called One Step Ahead. We want to take one step ahead in our relationship with God on our spiritual journey. Let me ask you a question here. Think about this. What is one step you need to take on your spiritual journey? Just pause for 30 seconds and think, what is that one step that you need to take to connect with God more? Maybe it's pray more, read the Bible more, be part of a fellowship more. What's that one step for you? Perhaps your first step is a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you, you need to start there. That's one, one step you need to take. You haven't committed your life to Jesus yet. Maybe you're not sure of your salvation yet. Maybe your one step is to talk to either me or Pastor Ryan or someone who can help you make sure that you know that you're saved. Or maybe for some of you, your one step is uh, staying connected to Jesus. What is your one step? So we're going to be talking about uh, taking just one step. You can't do everything, but you can do one thing. Maybe you look at your, your spiritual journey and say, that just seems like there's, I have so much to do, so, uh, so far to go to grow in my faith. But what's one step that you can take? So this uh, week we're starting this, this series, One Step Ahead, and we're going to be looking at the discipleship process, which uh, Pastor Ryan talked about is connect, grow, serve. This process is to help you mature in your faith. And the first thing is connecting. And each of these has, to, has a symbol attached to it. So the puzzle piece is all about connecting. Are you connecting to God and to one another? The second piece of it is to grow. And that's symbolized with the growing leaf symbolizing that we need to grow in our faith and then there's serving and that is the symbol of a a hand with a heart reaching out with love to others and so connect grow serve now here's a sampling of different ways that you can start connecting at trinity some of you have uh, enjoyed over the summer um, the ice cream tour for example this is a way for you to connect photography club chess club there's a frisbee golf club now today after church the the church picnic that's a way just to connect you know get get connected to someone a new ministry called single sisters there's story time for preschoolers um you know for uh, moms to connect and kids to connect there's supper clubs there's so many different ways to connect and then there's lots of ways to grow there's the electives that that pastor ryan talked about there's baptisms which we were planning, by the way, uh, for uh, some of the, our, our younger people. We we're planning on October 15th of having that, but we realized that many of the, the ones signed up for baptism haven't gone through a sort of catechism kind of class where they learn about salvation, baptism, communion. So we're going to be postponing that to January, February sometime so we can do what's called Pizza with the Pastors, where we sit down and we talk about um, our salvation, our uh, baptism, communion, and, uh, but, if, but if you would like to be baptized, you're an adult and you're saying, well, I, I've never been baptized, or a young person said, I would like to be baptized, talk to me, talk to Pastor Ryan, we'll sign you up for, for that. So we have uh, that way to help, help you take that one step in your spiritual journey. There's the, the church library right, right behind the sanctuary here with lots of resources, books and CDs and uh, DVDs on helping people grow. And then we have growth groups, and that helps people grow. They're sort of like small groups or Bible studies that help people make friends and grow spiritually. And so we have lots of ways to help people grow, but then we also have ways to help you serve. 
We have ways to help you serve in the community through outreach events. And uh, like we have the Caring Closet, which is a new ministry that uh, we started that helps those who need resources, you know, shampoo and, and toothpaste and things like that. But then we have uh, we, the first day of school right across the street at Lidditz Elementary. We're handing out um, uh, gifts to the kids as they came. It was awesome. And uh, handed out, I think, like 2,000 maybe not quite that many, like two, about 200, though, uh, things to, to kids, and, and uh, parents stopped and, and just said, hey, I just want to say thank you. Your church just does this all the time. It, we do it about once a month, usually, just to reach out during the school year, and it's an amazing way that we're reaching out to uh, parents and kids, and it's a way to serve so these are different ways to serve. And in the church, we have 10, 10 different ministries with teams under them. And, that, you know, not everybody's gifted at, let's say, teaching Sunday school or something like that for, for kids or hanging out with the youth. But you're good at fixing something. And you're good with your hands. Or you can sing. And maybe you're next to someone who can't sing, but you can and you would like to get involved somehow in singing or, you know, involved in worship somehow. There's so many different ways to serve. And Pastor Ryan's going to be talking about that in a few weeks. But today we want to focus on this word connect. What does it look like to take one step to help you connect, first of all, with Jesus, and then second of all, with your church family? So what's one step? And I want to give you uh, the challenge up front, and that is to take that one step to connect with Jesus or reconnect with Jesus, and then what's that one step to get more connected to your church family here at Trinity, if this is your church family, which I hope it is. And it's, it's for us to take a step out, step out of your comfort zone. Sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone to make others feel welcome. We're going to talk about that today. So let's start with uh, your first step and that's just to, to connect with Jesus, first of all. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ yet, that's the first part of our, our mission is to follow Jesus. If you're not doing that, that is your first step. And you need to take that first step to follow Jesus and maybe put your salvation in Jesus Christ. But for many of you, you you've already done that. And you need to stay connected to Jesus Jesus says in John 15, he says, remain in me and I will remain in you. In other words, stay connected to me. And then he goes on, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a, a person remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And then he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so we need to take that step to reconnect with Jesus if we're, we feel like we're, we're drifting. You know that old hymn, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Sometimes you feel like, man, I'm just, I'm prone to sort of wander away and leave the God that I love. And so that first step back, you know, like the prodigal son was, was walking away from his father and his father was chasing him down. And the prodigal, prodigal son, his first step back home. And for you, maybe that is what you need to do today is just make that first step back to him to stay connected to Jesus. But then, we also need to look at how to connect with our church family, what's called the body of Christ. One another, where we do the biblical one another's, where we serve one another, we love one another, we forgive one another, we bear each other's burdens, we, we mourn with those who are mourning, we rejoice with those who are, who are having a good, uh, good time or learn some good news. And so the the body is uh, a term that Paul uses quite often. In Romans 12, he says, just as each one of us has a body, and each one of your bodies has many different parts, and they don't all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many, all of us, we form one body, even though we have different parts, everybody does a different task, and we, we all belong to each other still. And he says the same kind of thing to the Corinthians and to us. He says, now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. We all belong. And this is what we want. We want to, to be this body of Christ. Just like a body is connected, 
It has all these different parts, but they're all working together, serving together, loving each other. And so we have to make an effort to stay connected because there's no Lone, Lone Ranger Christians. You know Lone Ranger? He, all, he, he even had Tonto, right? He's a Lone Ranger, but he had Tonto. Yes, Kimo Sabi, remember? You know what I'm talking about, Lone Ranger? Anyone in the back know Lone Ranger? You know what I mean? We, we can't be Lone Ranger Christians. We need one another. And so we need to connect. And that, that has to do with belonging, a place where you fit in. You ever walk into a place and you, you just knew you didn't belong? Like, I don't think I fit in here. You ever walk into a church and you're like, I don't know if I, I, don't know if I fit. I don't know if I belong. You ever, for example, walk into the wrong bathroom? Anyone? Over the years, you know, maybe three, four times in my life, I've gone into the woman's bathroom by accident, and you walk in, and you're like, these decorations aren't very manly, you know? And then you, you look, and you're, there's no urinals there, and then you sit down, and you like, you see some things that, that don't belong in the men's bathroom, and you say, this isn't a place I should be. I don't belong here. And in life, there's places we go where we say to ourselves, I don't belong here. But we want to be the kind of church where people come in and they start saying very quickly, I feel like I belong here. I feel like this is a place that I can belong, a place where I'm welcome. And so that's the kind of church we want to be, where people can come in and say very quickly, you're one of us. You're one of the family. You belong here. So, if you're relatively new here at Trinity, I have a challenge for you. And that is for you to step out of your comfort zone. And it is stepping out of your comfort zone. If you're here, you know, just within the last few months or so, the last year or so, it takes effort for you to take that one step and say, I'm going to ask someone to get, get together or get to know someone, or step out of your comfort zone and say, I'm going to go to the church picnic today, even though I don't know anyone. Maybe you didn't even bring anything. That's okay. We'll, we'll get enough food for you. Don't worry about it. Just show up and say, hey, I'm, I'm relatively new here. It's going to take some effort on your part to step out of your comfort zone and get connected and put your, yourself in a position where you can get to know people. So that's partly your responsibility, but the majority of the responsibility lies with the rest of us who have been perhaps at Trinity for a long time. It's up to us to make other people who are walking into the church, and church is not just the, the building, of course, but walking into an environment where brothers and sisters from Trinity are gathered, it's up to us to make them feel like they belong, they fit in. And we need to step out of our comfort zone to make outsiders feel like insiders. Amen? Isn't that up to you and me? Up, uh, up to us? That's what, you know, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, do you love strangers? Do you love those who are foreigners or newcomers, outsiders, people that don't look like you, people who might be strange, what we call strangers? You know, aliens is another way of putting it. Remember, speaking of aliens, do you remember uh, the movie E.T. came out, 1982, great movie? Um, uh, here's this, this extraterrestrial who his family or his buddies leave him behind and he's stuck here on Earth and he's all alone until he dis he's discovered by this 10-year-old boy named Elliot. And Elliot starts, you know, getting him to come in. What does he use? Reese's Pieces, right? Not M&M's, Reese's Pieces. And E.T.'s mom never taught him about stranger danger and taking candy from a stranger and stuff. So he starts eating these, these Reese's Pieces, and pretty soon he and Elliot become friends. Elliot invites him over to his house. They hang out, and they have this deep connection. At the end, everyone's crying, oh, I love E.T. Everyone's crying because they have this deep connection. And it all started with someone reaching out and giving them a little candy. Maybe that's not a good way to start with certain people, but uh, just letting you know. But the point is, 
the point is that we need to reach out to what would be called aliens or strangers, people who we don't know. And this is a very biblical thing. In fact, it goes back to the Old Testament. You know, in Leviticus, this is what the Old Testament says, Leviticus, this is what the Lord commands. He says, the alien, that is the foreigner, not E.T., the alien living among you must be treated as your native born. Love him as yourself. And here's the reason why. For you were aliens, you were strangers in Egypt. I'm the Lord your God. This is what I want you to do. Because you were once strangers. So treat people who are strangers like they belong. Deuteronomy 11 says the same kind of thing. And you are to love those who are aliens, foreigners, strangers among you. For you yourselves were strangers when you were in Egypt. So God commands his people to love strangers. This is what it talks about too in the New Testament. Jesus, remember he says, Matthew 25, he talks about the sheep and the goats. And he, he says, you know, when, when I return in all my glory, just like a shepherd is going to separate the sheep and the goats, I'm going to separate people according to how they treat others. Because how they treat others is how they treat me. And on the right are going to be the sheep. And those are the ones that are going to be invited into the eternal kingdom. And the people ask, well, why, why am I going to get into heaven? Into, you know, what, what are some of the, the ways? And it's, you know, of course, salvation through Jesus. But, but that then is demonstrated by how we, how we treat other people. And he says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to eat, a uh, drink. What is the next thing? I was a stranger, and you invited me in. You, you made me feel like I belonged. And then those on his left, he says, depart from me into eternal punishment. And what's that based on? Partly, it's I was hungry, and you didn't give me anything to eat. I was thirsty, you didn't feed me. I was a stranger, and you didn't welcome me. So how we treat strangers has eternal consequences, and it's a spiritual discipline. In fact, in 1 Timothy and in Titus, it, it was a requirement for the early church elders and overseers. They had to be hospitable. They had to love strangers, be welcoming. So it's not something, it's sort of like evangelism. Well, I, I'm uh, introverted, so I don't have to do evangelism, right? You know, it, that's just for people who are outgoing and friendly and things like that. That's not how it works, right? Just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you can't do evangelism. And the same thing is true for hospitality. Just because you're not extroverted doesn't mean you get a pass on being welcoming to other people. Hebrews 13 says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Isn't that cool? Abraham in the Old Testament, he, he thought he was being hospitable to just some guys. But it turns out later that they were angels. And listen, you could be missing a supernatural opportunity to, to meet an angel just based on how you treat a stranger. Isn't that cool? Like, you could be welcoming an angel. In uh, Palmerton, I lived uh, very close to uh, the Appalachian Trail, and sometimes there would be people that came off the Appalachian Trail that would come into the church, and they'd sort of have this odor sometimes because they were on the trail for a long time. And I remember one guy, um, this was a while back, and I was single, and he said, hey, I don't have a place to stay. Do you mind if I stay here? I'm like, uh, okay. You know, so I, I allowed him uh, to stay there. I never met the guy before. I never talked to him since. And who knows? Maybe he was an angel. You don't know. And this is an opportunity that we have to, to, to reach out in love and be hospitable in fact, the word hospitality in the New Testament, do you know what it actually means? 
That word hospitality, translated from the Greek, literally means love strangers. So when we're told to practice hospitality, it's this word, philo, like Philadelphia, love, philozenia, which is loving strangers. You've heard of xenophobia, perhaps. Xenophobia is the fear of strangers. Well, philozenia is the love of strangers. So the question is, are you a a xenophobe or a xenophile, someone who loves strangers or someone who's afraid of strangers? And Romans 12 tells us to share with God's people who are in need, and then it has that one word again, practice hospitality. Literally, love strangers. Show love to strangers, people who are different, people who are foreigners, people who are... are, um, And then... In 1 Peter, it talks about doing it without grumbling. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling or complaining. You know, sometimes you want to have someone over your house, and now you have to clean up and do all that kind of stuff. But do it without complaining. The requirement, again, for an elder or overseer in the church is you have to love strangers. You have to help others feel like they belong. So do you do that? And maybe that's your one step to help you grow, is to help other people get connected and grow. Now, do you remember your first time at Trinity? Perhaps some of you, you know, that's, you grew up at Trinity, so it's been, you know, years since it was your first time here. But can you remember your first time here? How did you feel? Maybe some of you felt like, well, I don't know if I belong here yet. And then this guy came up, bald-headed guy, had a little bit of a Dutchy accent. His name was Lee Fry. <laughs> came up to you and said, hey, you know, come to Sunday school or something like that. Forced you and you couldn't get away from him because he kept on talking. And, and he is a wonderful man. If you don't know, that's my dad. And that's where I learned how to, uh, to greet people. Isn't he a great guy? <laughs> Lee Fry. And after the first service, when I gave this, I had a guy come up to me and say, you know, it was like 45 years ago, I started coming to Trinity, and the reason I, I kept coming is because Lee Fry greeted me that very first Sunday. So we need people, not just out, outgoing like, like Lee Fry, but others to do that. In the new members class is uh, something I, I teach at every class. I call it the three-minute rule. It's three minutes before church and three minutes after church. Look for people that you've never met before. In fact, let's do this right now. Just look around and see someone. Look for someone who's a little strange. What I mean by that, <laughs> let me clarify that. Look for someone who is someone you've never met before. And you look and you say, that, that face looks sort of familiar. Maybe I've seen them once or twice, but I, I don't know their name. I don't know anything about them. It is our job, if you're relatively new, it's, it's partly your job to connect, but it's, it's the rest of us who need to look for those faces of, of people who seem a little strange and to say, I don't think we've met before. Let me uh, tell you my name. How about you tell me your name, you know? So I used this illustration before with uh, Legos. Uh, My son likes to play Legos, and um, they're all over the house sometimes. But uh, uh, imagine how lame it would be to just have one Lego piece. Like, oh, this is fun, just playing with that one Lego piece. Why would that be lame? It's because Legos are meant to connect. And it's true for the body of Christ, isn't it? We're meant to connect We're meant to connect with one another. And the more we connect with each other, the cooler stuff we can build. We can build big and amazing things, you know, like uh, life-size cars and things like that. When you build, when you keep connecting, and sometimes we have to make room. You you know, when we're all connected to each other and we don't make room to make more connections, then you can't keep building something bigger and better. And so, you know those little things, you know those little buttons I just recently found out, those little buttons that you connect, you know what they're called? They're named after the pastors at uh, Trinity. They're called studs. (laughs) Those things, 
They're, they're called studs. So that's the way you connect, by, by connecting more and more studs to each other. And we have to connect by saying, would you like to connect with me? Would you like to sit in my pew? Not, that's my pew, get out of it. But would you like to sit next to me? It was a beautiful thing this morning. I was so pleased with my daughter, Sarah. Um, she goes over to, if I may use, uh, she goes over to, to Grace, uh, who relatively new, within, let's say, five, five months. And she goes, would you like to sit with us? And I was like, go, Sarah. <laughs> you know, I was so, so pleased. And, um, and, you know, it's just a beautiful thing. If she can do it at seven years old, whatever age you are, you can do it, right? So here are some practical tips to help us take that one step out of our comfort zone to help others connect. Here is the, the very first thing you can do. The first thing is to learn someone's name. The most beautiful thing someone will ever hear probably is the name Jesus, of, Jesus, of course, but the second most uh, greatest name is their own. And so it's, it's so meaningful when you get to know someone's name. Not just, hi, you. It's letting them know. So, so hi, my name is Nathan. What's your name? And that is so meaningful. And some people say, you know, I'm just not good with names. Here's a little secret. Write it down or put it in your phone or somehow get it down so you, next time you see that person, you can uh, say their name. It's so important to people. The second thing you can do is to get to know one fact about them. And, and to do this, you have to ask some questions. Oh, so where are you from? You know, what are some things that you like to do? Where do you work? One of the coolest questions that I like to ask is, uh, what are some of your hobbies? Or what do you like to do for fun? And by asking this question, you're going to get to know so much about a person. I love this because did you know there's someone goes into our, uh, goes to our first service. I, I won't tell you the person's name. You're going to have to find out by asking people. There's a guy in our first service who has built an airplane and flies his own airplane that he built. Like, how cool is that? We have people in our church that are so amazing with woodworking. There's people who, like, uh, people who are into flowers and have gardens that are amazing. People who, we have a gentleman from our, our first service who uh, wrote composition for the Olympics. Like, national, you know, international Olympics, and you don't know that. The only reason I knew that is because I said, hey, tell me about yourself. What do you do? You know, blah, blah, blah. And do you, you, there's people in our church, it's so amazing. Doctors, there's teachers, there's nurses, there's people who teach calculus. I can't even spell calculus. You know, I'm amazed that someone cares enough about calculus or anything else like that remotely that like I it's just not me so you don't find out those things by just sitting now next to a, someone and saying hi good morning you have to go one step farther and that is the next step is number three is to invite them to join you for a conversation and join ask them to uh, uh, you know over for lunch or if you're not into cleaning your house take them out to dinner or lunch or something or coffee then you get to you just start asking those questions hey um can i sit beside you or would you like to sit beside me invite them to a game night invite them to the church picnic today single sisters chess club photo club invite someone into a relationship and then start asking some questions now think about this think about one of your closest friends or perhaps your spouse or you know some, one of your closest friends how did that start didn't it start with just one step of a conversation 
first step is usually you have to find out their name somehow. You find out a little bit more about them, and then you invite them out for a date. Or if it's just, you know, a friend, you invite them out for coffee. Or, hey, let's, you know, there's a basketball game. Would you like to come play basketball? Whatever it is, that's the process to get to know someone, to connect with someone. And that person became your close, close friend. And it all started with just getting them connected. And so it's a very simple thing that we can do today is what, it, what is it that, that one step you can take to connect with Jesus, first of all, if you haven't done that? But then what's that one thing you can do if you're relatively new? To step out of your comfort zone and get connected. But for the rest of you, what is that one step you can take to help someone else who might be a stranger right now, but in five years might be one of your closest friends? So let's pray together and ask that you'd pray about Maybe just one person that you would like to get to know. Maybe, maybe keep one eye open and look at that, that person that you sort of have seen their face, but you don't know them yet, and just get to know their name today. Take that one step today. So let's pray. Lord, we ask that you give us the courage to step out of our comfort zone, to take that one step to help someone who perhaps has come into Trinity and, and are saying, I don't know if I belong yet, help us to have the courage to step out and make an outsider feel like an insider, to get connected. And Lord, we ask that you would teach us what it looks like to not just be friendly to someone next to us, but to love strangers, to love those who are foreigners and new, new people, um, people not like us. Lord, show us what it looks like to take that one step ahead. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.